All right, so welcome. Uh, this is uh, Probability Foundations, uh, EE5110, Probability Foundations for Electrical Engineering. Uh, so this is a postgraduate level course on probability theory. All right. Uh, so this course will essentially it's a somewhat rigorous treatment of probability theory. I guess you could say it's a more rigorous treatment of probability theory than engineers are normally used to. All right. So uh, in this course we will. Uh, take an axiomatic view and focus more on deriving fundamental theorems and proving results uh, rather than uh, more undergraduate like treatments where you are probably uh, the more the focus is more on solving problems and computing expectations and computing probabilities and so on. So at, at, so at that level so you can think of this course as a more conceptual course there will be more emphasis on proofs all right more emphasis on rigorously deriving things and a greater degree of conceptual understanding. Right, so this course, uh, so who who should take this course? So if you think about it that way, is it right for you? So uh, this course is meant for people who are essentially more mathematically minded. So who people who will benefit from it are the ones who will probably do more more mathematical research. So if you are working on topics like uh, I don't know certain computer networks or uh, stochastic control or machine learning, where you need a somewhat strong foundation, conceptual foundation and probability, this course will be very useful for you. Um, so this course E5110 runs in two different avatars, okay, it is offered in both semesters, both odd and even semesters. The, it has the same number, but the version that is offered in the even semester uh, is more operational, it is more computational and operational and there is more emphasis on problem solving. Right. So if you are a more practical person who ha has greater use for problem solving and computing things and so on and not so much if you are not so uh, interested in really uh, getting into the nuts and bolts of probability theory, maybe the even semester course may be more appropriate for you. So this is a call that you may want to take whether you want to take it this semester or during the even semester. It is called the same thing but uh, so this co version will be more theoretical, more conceptual. All right. So for example, uh, this semester we this is the measure theoretic version of the course, okay, we, this will this course will have measure theory in it and the even semester version although it is called the same thing, it does not have measure theory in it, it is a much more slightly more elementary treatment conceptually although there will be more emphasis on problems and uh, computational aspects of probability, all right. So you may want to decide which one your which one is for you in some sense, right, you can always take this call in a, in a few weeks I guess. Uh, all right, so uh, say, so I'm Krishna Jagannathan, Electrical Engineering Department. Uh, that, that's that's where you can contact me. Uh, so the course has a website. Website. This is if you go to my web page, you can find the link to this web page. Uh, this this link right here has lists the entire course content. Okay, so all the topics we will cover are in fact given here. So I suggest you visit this today. All right. So reference material. Just let me write it down here. So there is no one book out there which closely follows what we are going to do, okay. So there is a number of uh, material that I am going to suggest. Uh, so you do not have to buy all these books, okay. So uh, uh, what I would, I think the book that you should probably consider seriously buying is uh, Grimmett and Sturzaker, okay. This is probably most well matched with the kind of, uh, this is a very good book, it is a very classic book. So. Uh, this this is something you may want to consider buying Stir Zaker uh, third edition probability and random processes right uh, Oxford University Press it is an expensive book it is about 2800 rupees or so, uh, it is an excellent book though, so if you if at all this will be a standard reference uh, and there is another open source reference which I will follow quite a bit, it is uh, MIT OCW open courseware, uh, there is a link on uh, the home page, all right? so if you go to the web page uh, there is a link. So this is also a very useful source, it is a, we will follow certain lectures from there, uh, it is a good source. So they, these two are roughly at the level at which we will do, we will be doing this course and there are other uh, textbooks 
which are either slightly at a more elementary level or at a more advanced level right. So, I will list a couple of them also. Uh, so, there is a book by Bertsy Maas and Tsitsiklis. Uh, this is slightly more UG level, okay. It is an excellent book, Bertsy Maas and Tsitsiklis Introduction to Probability. Uh, and there is David Williams, uh, Probability with Martingales, okay. This is a beautiful book, but it is more advanced than what we will need, what we will cover. But there are certain topics here which are just beautiful, right. So, this is this one and there is one by Rosenthal. <coughs> Uh, these two books are more advanced. <coughs> so David Williams and Rosenthal, they are both more advanced than what we will cover, but there may be few results and few things that I may refer to this uh, these books. But in any case, uh, both these books are beautifully written, very, very good books and uh, more advanced probability theory. Uh, there has been, so this is what, so roughly this is really what mostly you need to focus on. Right, these two uh, references are enough, I think, and these are uh, occasionally. I think will be occasionally useful. Uh, there is also um, an effort going on uh, by students from the previous years to actually LaTeX the notes from previous years of this class. So that I mean, just so just I mentioned, as I mentioned, there is no one book that covers all the material in one place. So uh, we figured that it may be a good idea to just put everything down on LaTeX. So students from previous years have actually collaborated and formed a group to LaTeX the notes from previous years. Okay. So those notes are uh, there. The first round of the editing is over, and so I will make them available to you. All right. So I will put them. Uh, so the class notes, LaTeX. Uh, let me write it this way, LaTeX class notes uh, to be uploaded periodically on Moodle. Okay, so, these uh, notes will be up, uh, uploaded from time to time. Uh, so, the thing with thing is these notes are I think they are all right. I think they are not yet fully polished. So, you have to realize that they are just coming out of the press. So, there may be some minor errors and they may not be very polished. So, I will give them to you, but just remember the caveat that there may be the occasional mistake or you know there may be some errors or bugs or typos in there. If you find any bugs or errors or typos, please let us know. So, that the idea is to improve these notes as we go along, all right. It is like a collaborative effort to get it done. So, we will build up from basics, okay. So, there is nothing that I am going to really assume other than some basic real analysis concepts. So, we will really be starting from the very basic stuff, okay. Uh, I will I will start, you know, if the real course material I will start on for the next, uh, from the next lecture. Today, I just want to get some sense from you on what you think, pro why we study probability and what it is, what is, what it is that probability theory does, why are, why are we interested in it, right. So, can I get some, uh, your feelers from you on why you think, what is probability theory and why people study it. Ah, so, to study non-deterministic events, right. So, is, is that convincing uh, answer for you? The mathematical approach to study experiments with uncertain outcomes. Huh, mathematical uh, tools to study experiments with uncertain outcomes, right. So, uh, it is basically what it is. So, if you think, if you want a very concise way of looking at it, probability theory is a, uh, it essentially is the science behind randomness, right. It is the science of randomness, right. Uh, so, there are uh, in real life we know that there are so many uh, uh, events that we encounter which we do not seem to have a perfect control over or perfect ability to predict or a perfect knowledge of, right. Uh, things such as uh, the, the toss of a coin or toss of a die or what the weather is going to be tomorrow or whether a, you know uh, uh, whether a child is going to be a male or female, right. These are things that we do not seem to have control over, right or we do not seem to have a complete under understanding over. And so, these are, but if you, the, the thing about these random events, so called these random or non-deterministic events is that there is a larger pattern to them, 
right? That is the central point, right? Although apparently the one time I toss a coin, I have no idea whether it's going to be head or tails, or I have no idea whether I really can tell, tell the temperature tomorrow. There is a larger pattern to these things, right? So you know, for example, that although you don't know the sex of the baby that's going to be born, on an average, half of them are men and half of them are women, right? So or roughly, if you toss a coin a million times, roughly half of them turn out to be heads, right? So these are certain larger, large scale patterns or, you know, long term certain patterns or uh, what may be called, I guess patterns is the right word, right? So uh, patterns that one observes in these seemingly random events, right? And probability theory tries to quantify these, these aspects, right? It's a theory that helps us to mathematically capture the pattern behind these seemingly random events, right? That's, that's really what probability theory does. Now, uh, this, you know, these games of chance have been uh, played even since the ancient civilization. So it's been around for a long time. Uh, and actually, even for the last several centuries, people have been computing odds in winning bets and so on, right? So I guess for a few centuries, people have been computing probabilities at some level or the other, right? Uh, the, although the mathematical theory of probability theory, probability, uh, the more rigorous foundations of it were laid only about a century ago. So probability theory as we know it today is only about a hundred years old, okay. Uh, it's primarily the, uh, the primary person, the, the mathematician who primarily contributed to it, to the modern theory of probability, do you know? Hmm? Is Laplace, yes, Laplace made contributions, in fact Laplace uh, was a, yes, he, he did make uh, significant contributions uh, about, uh, that's about three centuries ago, I guess. Uh, but more, it's, I said the modern theory of probability is only 100 years old. It's a very famous mathematician, Kolmogorov, right? As a great Russian mathematician by name, Andrei Kolmogorov, right? So he is the uh, father of modern probability theory. So essentially, he cast probability theory as a uh, he realized that it's basically a special case of what is known as measure theory, which was developed by two French mathematicians, primarily uh, Borel and Lebesgue. Okay, uh, and then of course last hundred years there has been an explosive uh, development of this probability theory. So uh, we will what we will do is in fact uh, this axiomatic modern p p probability ax axiomatic approach. Uh, so the question arises: Why do we need it? So uh, even well before Kolmogorov, people have been computing probabilities, right? People have been computing their chance of winning bets, odds of winning bets, and so on, right? So why do we even bother? Why do we need this more uh, sophisticated theory or more math rigorous mathematical theory? If you can compute probabilities, you can compute. You can. That's all we need, right? For practically, that's all we need. If I tell you that probability of a certain event is blah, 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 you think that, so let's say if the probability of an event is 1 by 3, well, it occurs roughly 1 out of 3 times, right? And we know, you know, this, this is all we really need in practice. See, the reason that there is this, that people have bothered to make this a rigorous mathematical theory is because before Kolmogorov, uh, people have been running into all sorts of paradoxes and contradictions. No, because without a proper theory, you run into all sorts of prob uh, problems, right? There are, because if you all only go by a certain intuitive understanding, you can run into difficulties, right? To illustrate this, <coughs> to, to illustrate the, uh, the importance of an axiomatic theory, right? There is a very, uh, you, there are many paradoxes that you can come up with if you do, if you're not careful about uh, doing doing this probability theory, na rigorous way, right? So there are many paradoxes that you can run into, okay? So what I will do is I will just uh, describe one such paradox to you, okay? Very famous paradox and uh, that will hopefully send the message across to you on why we need to be a little more careful than just a normal intuitive understanding of probability, right? So this paradox, it's a well-known paradox. So you, you take a circle, okay, you take a circle and you inscribe a equilateral triangle in it, okay. Let us see, this is the center, so 
So, you have a circle and an inscribed equilateral, tri equilateral triangle, okay. So, let us say this radius is, let us say this radius is just 1, okay, it can be r or whatever, 1, okay. And so, if this is 1, then uh, this is also 1 and then this will be, so this side will be square root of 3, right, side of the triangle will be square root of 3, isn't it. So, the <coughs> question is the following. Uh, so, take a circle and draw a chord uniformly at random. What is the probability that this random chord is longer than square root of 3, which is the side of the inscribed equilateral triangle, right. So, the question is you draw, you basically close your eyes and draw a chord, all right. And the question is, so you, so you draw a chord, okay. So, this is the length of the chord, right. The chord may be like this or chord may be like that, right. So, in this case, this will be the length of the chord. So, if you pick a chord uniformly at random, what is the probability that the length of the chord, in this case this or in this case that, is longer than the side of the inscribed equilateral triangle or what is the probability that this is larger than square root of 3, which is the side of the equilateral triangle, right. So, this is a, so this is a question, right. So, it turns out that uh, this is okay, the reason this is a paradox is depending on how you look at it, you get different answers to this question, okay. So, there are in fact, uh, you will, there are three perfectly reasonable sounding arguments which give you three completely different answers, okay. Um, so, the first, so let me see if I remember these correctly. So, the first way of seeing this is, so you want, so you want the chord to be longer than this side, right. So, what happens is, so if you, if you draw the in circle of this triangle, so this guy is an equilateral triangle, let us say you draw the in circle of this triangle, okay. And if it so turns out that the chord you draw, let us say you draw a chord, if it so turns out that the midpoint of the chord is inside the in circle, you can show that it will be longer than square root of 3, right. So, in this case, in fact, the center of the chord is inside this in circle and you can see that this guy is longer than square root of 3, right. Whereas, if it is a chord like that and the midpoint is outside the in circle, it will be shorter than square root of 3, correct. So, uh, so you may argue here that, so in this case, so this is, uh, this is the first possible construction, right. So, in this case, the probability that your random chord is longer than square root of 3 is simply the probability that the center of the chord falls inside this, this little circle, in circle, correct. So, you are essentially looking at, so the question you are really looking at is where is the center of the chord, correct. If it is inside the in circle, you are longer than square root of 3, if it is outside the in circle, it is shorter than square root of 3. So, essentially you are looking at the probability that the center of the chord is inside that in circle, right. Now, you know that the radius of this in circle is how much? This is half, right, because this is the centroid and so this divides it into 2, two to 1. So, this, this radius is half, right. So, the probability that your center of the chord falls into this circle is how much? If it is uniformly at random, then it should be 
area of this little circle divided by the total area right so in this uh, so the midpoint of the chord so if you take the argument about the midpoint of chord so the answer you get is 1 by 4 you see why because you are looking at the point the midpoint falling inside the radius of the circle of radius half whereas the whole radius is 1 right so and the area of this is of course 1 fourth the area of the bigger circle right so this is one answer right so this is a perfectly reasonable argument right the, the trouble is that I mean you will probably say okay this is the answer and that is it right the trouble is that there are also other perfectly reasonable sounding argument which give you other answers different answers okay. Uh, Yeah, so the second let us say the second argument goes as follows. Let me erase these. So, let us say that you fix, let us actually get rid of this triangle as well. Okay. Another way to draw a chord uniformly at random is to just fix one end of the chord, all right, wherever you want. Let us say you fix it here, all right. And consider, so let us say this is the tangent to or that point, okay. This is one end of the chord, and you can draw the chord like that or like that, right. Now, whether or not this chord is longer than square root of 3 or shorter than square root of 3 will depend on. So, here is where, so if I draw an equilateral triangle from that point, it will look like that, right. So, it depends on the angle that this guy makes with the tangent. So, if my if this chord is making an angle of so this equilateral triangle makes an angle of 60 degrees pi over 3 right if this angle is if this angle is less than pi on 3 right I will be shorter but equivalently if that angle is greater than 2 pi on 3 right if it is like that it will be shorter right the chord will be shorter. Whereas, if the angle made with this uh, tangent is between 60 degrees and 120 degrees pi on 3 and 2 pi on 3, my chord will be longer than the side of the triangle, correct, make sense. So, essentially what I am doing is fixing one end of the chord, right and then looking at what angle it makes with the tangent. So, if from that point of view it looks like, so if this angle is uniform, right because it is a random chord. So, it does not prefer any particular direction right. So, if the angle is uniform then the probability that you are longer than square root of 3 is simply the probability that this theta is lying between 60 and 120 pi on 3 and 2 pi on 3. What is that probability equal to? 1 by 3 right because well this angle is uniformly at random chosen uniformly at random. So, if you make this uh, this angle with tangent, this argument you get answer equal to 1 on 1 over 3, correct. Already you have two different answers to the what seems like the same question, right. I have just argued it, I have not made any mistakes, right. I am not cheating you in a, with any some simple, this is not any mistake that is going on, right. I have computed it correctly and I am getting two different answers. Actually, there is even one more way of getting. Uh, a different answer altogether and that the argument is as follows. Uh, so, that is the triangle. Huh. So, you, you, you take one side of the equilateral triangle all right and you draw that perpendicular okay so what you're doing is now you're you're fixing the so you're fixing the the direction of the chord all right and you're just going to move the chord up and down all right so whichever angle you want you fix the the angle of the chord so and you're just going to move it up or down and you're going to draw the equilateral triangle parallel to it Okay, the side of the equilateral triangle will be parallel to it. 
So now if you see, if you are going only going to draw chords which are parallel to this guy, it does not have to be horizontal, it can be any other direction, I will just flip the, I will just rotate the equilateral triangle. So it, the fact that this is horizontal is not any big deal. So you can see that uh, if you draw a chord like that, it will be longer than square root of 3 and if you draw a chord like that, it will be smaller than square root of 3, correct. So what we are seeing is, so if you take that radius, the probability of the chord being longer than square root of 3 is simply the probability that it is lying above this point, the center of the chord is lying above that point, correct. So, if you are above this point, you are longer and you are below, you are shorter. So, if you look at this radius and if you think that if you let us say that the, the center of the chord is uniformly distributed on this radius, right, then you are looking at, so this is midway, right, so this is midway between this and this. So, you would conclude that the probability, the required probability is half 1 by 2, right, because this is this in this length you are longer and this length you are shorter correct so in that case you will get so if you look at what should we call this uh, so the distance center of circle and center of chord, right. So, if that distance is uniformly distributed because it is not, it does not prefer any particular radius, you will get the answer is half, right. So, there, so it is what was posed in English as uh, seemingly well posed question, it has led to three perfectly reasonable sounding answers, there is nothing, they have not made any mistakes here, all right. So, there is no cheap error, okay, it is actually a deeper problem going on, okay. Now, the question is what is happening, right. So, there are no paradoxes, right, there are all paradox, I mean if, if at all you want to be consistent, you have to have a resolution, right, there should not be these kind of paradoxes in, in any theory you build, right. Uh, so, what is the resolution? Do you have any, do you already know or do you have any guesses? So, the same question, right, I am taking the same English question, right, and in translating it to mathematical languages, I have done it in three different ways and ended up with three different answer, seemingly correct all three of them, but the question is the same question. Right. The case for the sample space, we are taking every element in us. In case of three, the sample space do not have every element in us. Uh, well, okay. So, uh, I, I did not quite understand what you said, but I heard the word sample space, right. So, okay. So, that, that is uh, an important concept, right. Uh, any other guesses? Huh. In the first uh, method, hmm. actually, all the points are not equally likely, right. Like the center point can have n chords, infinite number of chords going through that. Well, as all points can have infinitely many points, with chords going through them. As you come to the side, uh, like all the, uh, there may not be infinite number of chords going there through. There are, there are. Infinite number of chords will be there, but as center point, as that point, it no. would not be there infinite, no? That is not true. It still each point will have infinitely many possible chords, right. So, that is not the answer either. Right. So, there is something, so this is not some cheap error, all right. this is not some little mistake that I have made somewhere. So, it is actually an intriguing uh, question, why this is happening, right. it is actually a slightly non-trivial explanation. The expl so, the, the one word I heard is this about sample space, which is a very important concept that we will study. So, to state it in plain English, we are getting three different answers, because we are answering actually three different mathematical questions. Okay, so, what I post as a plain English question, which I wrote as random chord within uh, uh, quotes, right. So, we are getting three different answers, because we are actually, they are answers to three different mathematical questions, okay. 
So, if the questions are different, the answers, are, answers can be different, right. It seems like they are the same English question, but mathematically actually they are answers to three different questions in more formal terms the sample spaces, the probability spaces involved are in fact very different in the three cases, okay. I will of course uh, uh, define these terms more carefully as we go along, but in this case the midpoint of the chord being within the circle there the sample space we are looking at the center of the chord and the, the so sample space we are looking at is, this is the whole circle and we are looking at a uniform distribution of the center of the chord within the circle. Similarly, in the second case we are looking at the uniform distribution of the angle that it makes, right. So, although it seems like they are all uniformly drawn chords, mathematically the, we have solved three different mathematical problems. So, the question the mathematical questions and the probability spaces, the sample space behind each of them are in fact different, okay. They are not the same, it is not the same problem, we are getting three different answers because we are answering three different questions in mathematical terms, okay. Is that okay? So, which is why we are getting three different answers. So, it is actually not what seems like the same English question is are different mathematical questions corresponding to three different sample spaces therefore, you get three different answers, okay. So, which is why no, so this why did I give this example just to warn you or give you a caveat that if you are generally loose about these things. So, if you generally say a random chord without really mentioning what the sample spaces or what the underlying probability spaces you can get into all sorts of confusions, you can get any of these three answers. Maybe there are more answers you can get if you, you know if you pose some other problem you get a different answer, right. So, it I hope this has kind of slightly opened your eyes at least to the possibility that you have to be a bit more careful in talking about things like a random point or a random chord or you know these things you cannot be very loose about, you have to specify in a more precise way. Hmm? So, the three different questions are, so we will do this, we can once we do all these sample spaces and stuff, uh, we will be become more clear. So, in this case as I said, you are considering the distribution of a midpoint, your distribution of points inside the circle uniformly and you are looking at the probability that the midpoint of the chord lying inside the circle. So, it is like, so the sample space is the entire circle itself and it is a uniform distribution inside the circle and you are looking at the center of the point being inside the smaller circle. Whereas, for the second case for example, the sample space is this theta, right. I mean the set of the thing what you are varying is theta, it is not the center of the chord. So, it is finally, so the sample space is between 0 and 2 pi and you have a uniform distribution in that. So, they are all different mathematical questions, it is not the same question, it seems like the same question in English, but not in mathematical terms, right. In the second, so in the final case for example, your sample space is 0 1, interval 0 1, where you are putting the chord, right. So, they are actually different probability spaces, different sample spaces and therefore, different mathematical questions, okay. So, you can learn, so this is called the Bertrand's paradox. So, actually Wikipedia has a good article on this and the book by Ross also has this I think. Uh, you can, they have even simulated all three of this and shown what the chords look like, okay. So, it is a pretty interesting article to read, okay. This is a very famous paradox in probability. I will point out a few more paradoxes as we go along, okay. There are some interesting paradoxes we, you can, uh, you can cook up. There is another paradox in probability theory on why you need measure theoretic. Uh, a measure theoretic view of probability that also I will point out later, okay. This is just saying that you have to be careful defining sample spaces, you know defining what your underlying probability spaces and so on.